We are in day two of our conference, which we are live streaming from all over the world. As you know, we're all in lockdown because of this pandemic. So we are going to be doing this digitally. My name is Natasha Elkington, and I'll be your host for this uh, live session. And I'm very excited to introduce my second guest of the GLF. And that is Patrick Babumian, who is also the world's strongest vegan. He was named Germany's strongest man in 2011, and that's the same year he decided to go vegan, and since then has broken seven, several world records and shattered many misconceptions about veganism. And uh, he's facing his biggest challenge in changing the world's um, food eating habits. And today we're gonna to be chatting about that as a theme of, the, of, of our forum is um, food in the time of crisis. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you, and you're joining us from Germany. Yes, yes, I'm just outside Berlin. Lovely, and I'm signing in from Kenya. So, so we're gonna be live streaming um, on Instagram. So feel free to send in your questions and your comments. Tell us where you're, you're signing in from and look forward to a half an hour great discussion. Cheers. So why don't we just get into it, Patrick? So as you know, like our theme for, um, for this uh, conference is food in the time of crisis. So why is it especially important right now about you know, paying attention to our eating habits during this crisis? Why is this an important theme, do you think, to focus on? Well, we live in a globalized world, uh, and I think we, we can see that right now um, through what's happening with the pandemic and, uh, and everything and how it, um, one thing that happens at one place in the world affects the whole world. So basically, uh, we, I think we need to be thinking um, systemically and, and more, you know, globally in, in terms of uh, what the impact of, um, of our own con consumer uh, behavior and, and, and eating is a big part of, you know, what, what we consume, um, what, what, that, what that has. So what we do affects the whole world, basically. So if you want to, um, you know, be responsible, you just have to take that into account. And, and uh, when, when you make decisions uh, about, you know, um, what kind of products you consume. And if you look at the, the environmental impact of animal products and um, environmental impact of a more plant-based diet, the plant-based diet is, has always a smaller footprint. So uh, I think with the ch challenges that we see um, today um, in, in regards of public health and in regards of the environment uh, in, in, in so many different aspects, um, and, you know, starting from deforestation to uh, to climate and and so on, there are so many um, effects that you can't reduce if you uh, if you go more plant based. So that's what I'm basically trying to advocate, and and what what I'm and and a part of advocating that is just um, trying to um, help uh, get rid of misconceptions about what it means to be plant based, because a lot of people still think that it has a lot to do with um, you know, not being allowed to do things. And that's not really what it is. Um, if um, it, Of course, it is very different from, for instance, what, what I used to eat uh, when, when, I was, uh, when I was still eating meat um, um, when I was younger. But it's not about not being allowed to, to eat certain foods, but it's rather about actually um, just... just um, um, expanding your horizon into a completely new uh, um, universe because there are so many options that I had never tried before, before going vegan. And I just found them out through this, you know, new uh, um, 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 journey of mine, so to say. So, so it's, um, I'm, I'm trying to just basically um, advocate that and, and um, hopefully it's going to have a positive effect. <laughs> yes, indeed. How about, how about we just go back a little bit and maybe you can just tell us a little bit more about how, how you came to decide to become a vegetarian and then move on to veganism. I'm sure a lot of mm -hmm. our audience would like to know, you know, how, what, how that came about. Yeah. And especially yeah, so, as an athlete. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so, so, so I, I was an athlete before. So uh, when, when I uh, started training, uh, I was 14 years old. So I started actually um, pretty, pretty young. Um, and back in the day, I, I was, um, you know, like um, most people or, or almost everyone in, uh, in, in fitness and, and in strength training, um, I was uh, taught that um, eating meat and uh, consuming animal products is, is a huge staple of, uh, of, uh, um, of nutrition that you need in order to gain muscle and weight. So, so I bought into that and because basically that was what everyone would say, that for me, there was no, 
second opinion on that. So, so I thought, okay, well, if everyone does it, it's got to be right, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that's how I would eat. I would eat a lot of meat and 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 dairy products, especially because I just happen to like dairy a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I was consuming a lot of milk and, and dairy products. Um, and then at some point, I just realized that there was a misconception, uh, not misconception, there was kind of a, um, you know, I, I wasn't really in line uh, with my, con my consumer be be behavior was not in line with how I felt towards animals. Uh, what that means is um, I was rescuing a lot of animals like, uh, you know, um, we, we back in the day, we, we lived uh, near a forest. So there was a lot of wildlife and sometimes you would have rescues. So we would rescue animals and, and basically put a lot of time and energy into trying to help these animals, these individual animals. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I realized I was eating other animals. So I thought this is not really, you know, logical. Why, why, why am I in one case compassionate towards this? sentient being that I see in front of me and like for at, at about the time where I made the decision to go vegetarian uh, we were just having um, a baby raven that we you know try to uh, foster and, and, and get to um, be released into wildlife again yeah so I just thought that I have this one bird here and I'm putting a lot of time and effort into trying to help this one bird and at the same time through this course of you know several weeks i'm eating like 20 chickens where's the sense in that so right. so that was for me the the point where i said well something's wrong here and i gotta address that uh, and for me the, the the crucial question was would i kill those chickens that i'm eating would i kill them myself if i would have to kill them myself and for me, the answer was no. And I think for a lot of people, the answer would be no. Like right. uh, the, if you go to a shop and you, uh, you know, buy the meat, it's way easier than to really, you know, have to slaughter it yourself. So I thought, well, if I wouldn't do it myself, I shouldn't pay someone else to do it. So that's when I stopped eating meat. And that's in 2005. Right. And uh, I was vegetarian for several years. Um, and the, the, to, to go that next step and become vegan um, had mainly to do with um, me realizing that in 2011, when I won the uh, title of Germany's Strongest Man, um, I got a lot of you know media attention. And, and what I realized at that point was that through all that media you know stuff going on, um, I could reach a lot of people with my message, basically to say, well, you know, we we can be compassionate and so on. And I was in a position being the strongest guy in the country um, that um, a lot of backlash that a lot of young guys would get when they would, you know, sh show compassion. Um, and, you know, coming from from that, you know, more traditional sense of what it means to be masculine, like, you know, right. if you're masculine, you know, today we would call it uh, a toxic masculinity. It's just basically, if you're a real man, you don't give a shit about anything you know just, right, just right, eat exactly. and, you know? <laughs> so um i hope my caricature <laughs> brought, brought the point across so so it's just basically um they would get a lot of backlash coming from that side uh basically of people you know um thinking that way mm -hmm. um and now as the strongest guy in the country i was basically the perfect weapon against that kind of backlash because right. you know you, you can't talk like that to the strongest guy in the country possible <laughs> so, exactly. so if, Great. If, if so what i realized is that a lot of young guys now for um would feel emboldened by um you know the strongest guy in the country being compassionate and being being um uh, vegetarian for that reason um and to to express themselves so i thought well this is really powerful i'm, I'm in a very powerful position so i started um actually um reflecting on on what i was doing and i just thought well, it's great that I'm vegetarian, but I'm still consuming all this dairy and I'm still consuming eggs. And if you take a look at how these products are, uh, are produced, there's still a lot of animal suffering going on in the production of these products. So I just wanted to do, do a better job, basically being in that powerful position. Um, so I made the next step and, and went vegan. And it was a hard decision for me because I wasn't really convinced that it would work. And um, my idea was, well, now I'm helping people basically, you know, um, having a, 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 not as much a hard time to, to go vegetarian. Uh, I wanted to do the same thing with, you know, with being vegan. Uh, 
Yes. But I thought, well, if I go for it and it doesn't work, and I wasn't really convinced that it, it would, you know, uh, work. I thought if, if it doesn't work, I'm not going to help anyone. It's, you know, I'm, I'm now in the public spotlight and they're just going to see me fail. So that's not going to help anyone. <laughs> so I gave myself several weeks to, you know, really research and, and try to find out how to make it work. And then when I went for it for the end of the year, end of 2011, um, I was really surprised how much easier it actually was and how, how great I felt once, you know, I did it. So I, that's, that's uh, the rest is history. That, that's almost a decade ago and it was the best decision in my life. Amazing. I mean, I mean, earlier before we started, I mean, you, you met my sons, right? Like one, I told you is a carnivore and one's a vegetarian. Um, very, but do you think that it's also part of like uh, how we're brought up? Like if we bring up our children, because I, I never gave him meat until he was two. And when he touched it, he did like he, he can't even be near it. So I'm also wondering mm. if it's how we also, you know, raise our children. If we just start them off as vegetarians, I think they wouldn't want to go to meat. What, what yeah, I think. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, culture uh, is, is a huge part of it. So, um, so, so one thing that, that I can uh, remember from, from my own experience is that me as a child, um, I would always um, 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 try, I would always spit out the, uh, um, the meat that they would try to sneak into my food. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't eat it if they gave it to me just as pieces. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, they, so my mom uh, used to try to sneak it in by blending it into, you know, like like in a soup or something like that. Right. Um, and I would still find those, you know, fibers and still spit them out. So, um, but, but that's just me. Um, mm. But generally, if you think, um, if you have a small child and you give them basically options, you, you give them a bunch of fruit and then you give them, uh, you know, pieces of meat, they will always take the fruit. So yes. usually if they have the option to eat the one or the other, they will always go for the plant-based uh, options. So I think it's really, and, and if you look at our anatomy, uh, you know, I think, I think the easiest way to think about this is if we were supposed to be biologically, if we were supposed to be carnivores or even omnivores, right? when we see a dead animal somewhere, I mean, not not a piece of steak. I mean, right. an actual dead animal uh, uh, being, you know, run over by a car. Mm -hmm. That should actually trigger a response in our bodies that that we get hungry and we want to eat that. Right. Nobody, almost nobody has that. And yes. the reason for that is because we're not we're 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 technically almost omnivores in in terms of we can eat everything. You know, but that doesn't need that. That doesn't mean that we have to eat everything. Like for instance, yeah, as I said, it just means that if we have to survive and there's not enough plant foods, we can eat, you know, fish or we can eat uh, different animal uh, mm -hmm. foods. But we don't have to do that. Biologically, we can just do perfectly on plants, and and it's actually on the long run way better for our bodies. Right. Exactly. And I, I had because I told you I was, I was talking to my friend who's a strength athlete. And I guess these are one of the cliche questions because they're asking, like, how do you manage to get sufficient protein to maintain your muscle mass? I'm sure this is a question that yeah. you get a lot. That's, so that's an absolute <laughs> classic. <It's... laughs> so please tell us. <laughs> yeah, it's actually not not that uh, not that hard. It's um, I, I totally get that people think it's hard, and that's again we we go back to culture because. Um, basically, the media and culture and everything in society tells us that protein sources, that means dairy and meat. That's like, and, and probably eggs, because right. Rocky used to swallow them before he would train. <laughs> so, it's, so, so that's like, you know, basically just this culture telling us that protein equals animal products. Right. Um, but if you take a look at the reality, let's take, for instance, meat. That is basically, you know, uh, we, we think of meat as, as the prime protein source. Um, in, in a steak, you have at about 20 grams of protein per 100 grams. So that means a fifth of, of the whole weight goes for protein. Um, you compare that to peanuts. And peanuts, usually, we um, just, just consider them snacks. Mm -hmm. nobody, nobody eats peanuts and thinks, oh, this is a great protein source. But they're 25 grams of protein per 100 grams. So they're actually, you know, relative to the, to the weight that you're eating, they are higher in protein than, um, than a steak. Okay. Now, uh, you know, someone coming from, from the fitness, fitness world would now start to argue about, 
biological value and amino uh, acid profile and so on. But all of these things um, are only relevant, like the biological value is just basically a means to evaluate um, how um, how sufficient a protein source on themselves is, you know, as as uh, a means to build muscle mm -hmm. um, or to build um, body protein, basically the human protein. Now, um, these uh, values are only um, are only uh, relevant if you take a look at one source at a time. So that means that biological value is only relevant if you would only eat peanuts the whole day you know, or if you would only eat steak the whole day. Nobody right. does that. So as soon as you start combining different foods, these values basically change. Uh, and usually what happens is that if you have a not so balanced protein source, you eat it with another protein source, they balance out each other. So at the end of the day, as long as you eat a balanced diet, it doesn't matter. The, the biological value is just it, 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 it's, um, it has no relevance at all in, in everyday life. So, so yeah, uh, um, but, but let's answer the actual question. So, so peanuts is just uh, one thing uh, that you right. can eat. Um, actually, it's, th there's a whole group of foods that are really protein, uh, high in protein, and that's um, legumes. So beans, chickpeas, peas, uh, lentils, all kinds of legumes. Uh, peanuts are actually legumes as well. Uh, and then soy products uh, also. And soy products are a little bit uh, controversial in, uh, in, in the fitness world as well, because people think of, you know, um, plant estrogens and stuff like that. But that's, again, a lot of misconceptions um, being, being on, on the high amounts of soy products for almost a decade now. I can tell you that there's no problem at all. Um, uh, they, they work great as a protein source for someone who wants to build muscle. Actually, the, the great thing about the soy protein is that it is um, balanced in it in and of itself. So if you have to basically stick to, you know, one protein source that you eat a lot over the day, soy would be a candidate for that because you don't have to balance out the, anything. It is already a very good balanced uh, protein source. Um, and it's also cheap in the production. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, um, of course, if you want to avoid um, GMOs, for instance, you want to uh, just take a look where your products come from. For instance, um, in, in Germany, when, when I eat tofu, for instance, which is a soy product, um, it is usually everything from soy that you buy in Germany is always organic. Um, it's not allowed to have anything else. And that means that it's non-GMO. So, but, but you can, you know, you always have options there. So, so you can just go with whatever option you, um, you know, is more in line with, with your own values. Um, so that, that would be soy, but and then also grains. Like for instance, things like rice and and uh, and just um, 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 oats and, and and stuff like that. Oats, for instance, a lot of people eat oatmeal uh, just for breakfast, and and they don't think of it as a protein source. Again, it's 18 grams per hundred grams. That's almost as high as a steak. So, so I think the message is basically almost everything um, that that um, has a lot of calories and is from plants also has a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of um, protein, um, with the exception of fruits and veggies. Fruits and veggies are great for, you know, vitamins and, and minerals and micronutrients, uh, but um, they're not, no protein sources. But, uh, but legumes and grains, um, there's protein everywhere. <laughs> Great. So then, so in terms of your, your veganism, your activism, activism and, you know, trying to get the world more open to, you know, becoming vegan or changing our, what are the biggest challenges that do you face when, you know, trying, when talking to people and trying to open their minds out? What is, what is, what are the main challenges you face, you know, with people who don't believe in, you know, veganism and think that, you know, it doesn't work? Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest, well, I can always just only uh, speak for myself, but um, I think for me, the biggest challenge is to stay, um, stay patient. <laughs> it's, okay. So, yeah, because the, the thing is, um, you are answering the same questions over and, and, and it's not, that's not, not a problem with the questions is the problem is that every new conversation that you engage in, you're talking to someone who thinks they know exactly how things work. Right. And then they basically have the same misconceptions that you have addressed a million times before. <laughs> but right. you can but you cannot come to the table 
and treat them that way. So you've yeah. got to treat every new conversation as a fresh start and give them, you know, that benefit of, okay, I'm going to take this serious and I'm going to, you know, answer your questions. And sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm not, not as good in that as I would like to be. And I, you know, I, I'm, I get annoyed by people who try to lecture me with about things that I have, you know, addressed and researched for millions of times before. Right. Um, and, and it gets really hard for me to stay, um, you know, patient and stay um, as um, polite as I want to be. Yes. So for me, yeah. that's that's basically the the biggest um, the the biggest obstacle that I have to control my own. Um, I don't know what to call it. The 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 beast that lives inside me and, <laughs> and gets angry from time to time, or let well, not angry, but more frustrated. Frustrated, yes, yes. But I think also one way is you know like education, right? Like if we start this from from you know from kids from a young age, then already we have different mindsets growing up, right? Because we were all told you have to eat meat. It's important. Like meat is how you. This is where why we're here today, I guess, right? Because this yeah, is the absolutely. old way of thinking. Absolutely. I think uh, education is key to to almost every problem that we see on the global landscape today. Yes. It always comes back to education. Like I was told years before, uh, I, I would always tell that. And, and, and some people would say, well, that, that, that's a very simplistic view of the world. But no, if you really go to the uh, mm. to the core of all these problems, it's always education. When I say we are influenced by culture, um, you know, education is influenced by culture as well. So, right. so everything works over education, um, and and problems. You know, cultural problems that we have, they can be addressed by properly, you know, educating kids and 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 helping them to uh, reflect on on these uh, things and 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 just um, get a sense of um, some of the stuff that we traditionally do um, that that it's not very helpful in in you know in today's world. Uh, I right. think that's that's basically the the main thing. It's always tradition against progress when right. it comes to culture, um, <laughs> and um, and you always have to reflect. You know, I I don't have a problem with tradition per se. Traditions can be great, um, but but you always have to reflect traditions and see do they still make sense in today's world? Like a lot of bad things that we know today are bad like, you know, sexism and, and racism and, and terrible things that, that everyone knows they're not good. But at some point um, in, in our, uh, you know, when, 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 we, uh, when we developed uh, as a species, they probably made sense. And that's why right. they kind of, you know, became part of our nature. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, but that doesn't mean that we just have to accept them. You know, I think it, a big part of, uh, of the solution is to acknowledge that, okay, these ugly things are a part of me for, for you know, for, um, you know, um, reasons of that, that doesn't have to do any, anything to do with, with myself, but with, you know, <laughs> how my ancestors had to survive in a, in a very, um, you know, a hostile environment, right? right so, right. so they had to have these um, ugly sides uh, uh, to to human nature. But in today's world, we live in a world where we're globalized, and we basically the whole world is a big family. So, so we have to reflect on these things and be better than that, and and be you know just just grow into something better. Exactly, I totally agree. I could actually sit here with you for a few hours and have this conversation. It's so interesting and we have such a short time. So um, I think I'm gonna add, uh, we're gonna, yes, I've been told that we should get the questions from the audience because we haven't even finished my questions, but that's fine. So I'll start with um, um, one question is like, what's your favorite quick meal, like 10 minutes or less mm -hmm. that you can yeah, so share with us? Uh, that that's a tofu scramble. So um, okay. I used to eat that as an egg scramble when before I went vegan, um, and it's just basically uh, tomatoes uh, in a in a pan. You just uh, you know just, just fry them until most of the water is gone, and then you just take tofu and you just uh, basically you know just 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 crush it into um, in, into the uh, tomatoes, yeah. a bunch of uh, a bunch of salt and pepper and 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 some spices. I put a lot of curry into it because the turmeric and the curry is, is great for your health as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that's my, like, if, if, if it has to be fast, um, that's, that's what I go for. 
Great, great. That sounds good. I'm going to try that this weekend. Um, let's see another question we have. Is there, are there any health risks um, to, to being vegan? Yes, yeah, kind of yeah, so, question. Yeah, so I would definitely say you, you should have a basic um, understanding how nutrition works before okay. you try it. And the reason for that is not really because, you know, being vegan is, uh, is, is um, in, you know, it, it doesn't have to do with veganism. It has to do with, um, you know, uh, omnivorous diets, because it's part of culture and, and everything, you get a lot of, uh, you, you don't have to have a lot of knowledge, uh, but you get a lot of basically templates from society because, mm -hmm. you know, the majority is omnivore. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's way easier. If you become vegan, you don't get as much input from society. And then the risk to do mistakes is, is, um, is high. Right. Um, although I have to say, even on, on an omnivorous diet, if you take a look at society, you, we have so many you know, uh, problems with obesity and, and stuff like that. So there are risks there, as, uh, enough risks there as well. But uh, one, one thing that happens to a lot of people if they don't understand um, nutrition well enough and they go vegan is they don't eat enough calories. Because they would think, well, you know, um, if you only have a very basic understanding, you think, well, fruits and veggies are great, right? They're, you know, considered healthy. So I'm going to eat a lot of fruits and veggies. And then some people even go for raw uh, uh, veganism, right. which yep. basically means they don't eat any uh, cooked food. <laughs> um, may sound like a great idea, but all of that is going to make it way, way harder to get enough calories and to actually, you know, give give your body the fuel it needs. What happens in a lot of cases that is that these people uh, starve themselves of calories and they start, you know, doing not as well in terms of energy, and they blame that to veganism. But that doesn't have to do anything with veganism. If you eat enough calories, you eat enough protein, and you make sure that you get all the nutrients you need, um, then you can, uh, you know, you can uh, thrive and 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 really really do well on a vegan diet. Um, and, and one question that all, uh, also comes a lot is about supplements in, mm. in, in that regard, because right. a lot of people think, well, you have to probably supplement a lot of stuff on, on, on the vegan diet. Um, there's actually just one thing that you really have to supplement, and that, that will be B12. Uh, B12 uh, is, is uh, something that usually gets um, produced by microorganisms. And it is everywhere. If you would eat um, dirt, you know, if, if the food that we eat would be dirty and we would drink, you know, water from a natural source, um, we would get those microorganisms oh. with food. Okay. Um, and, and, and that's the natural way, basically. Mm -hmm. But in today's world, you know, having to deal with chemicals and having to deal with, with uh, all, all these uh, things. I wouldn't recommend to anyone to eat dirty food. <laughs> right. So so because of that reason you should supplement uh, B12. So if you're eat, uh, eating animal products, you usually get the B12 via the animals because, you know, they are getting food that has these, um, you know, microorganisms and so on. So you're using them basically as the middleman to, to get your B12. But if right. you only stick to plants and those plants are all, you know, uh, washed and there's no bacteria on the plants, you're going to miss that. So B12 is really the one thing that you absolutely should supplement. Um, and, and I would actually tell omnivores to supplement that as well, because it's a safe supplement. It, it does, if you're not allergic or something, it doesn't have any side effects um, and it's cheap. And, um, and it's it basically impossible to overdose it. And your body just takes as much as it needs. And then everything else will just run through. So, um, so everyone should actually just supplement B12. But other than that, you know, you can be on a vegan diet and, and just have a balanced diet that's going to give you everything you need. Oh, fantastic. I have so many questions. Everyone's loving our conversation. I don't know why they gave us half an hour. I think they're listening. But um, I think, uh, okay, because I, I did want to ask you about the documentary the Game Changers um, and how that's affected things. But I think we have like very few minutes. Um, so maybe, the la maybe you can touch on that as you give your last message. Just a message for people who want to you know, change their eating habits and become vegan. So what would be your message for that? And then maybe you can just touch upon, you know, how this documentary, you know, it's actually helping change uh, mindsets. Yeah. Yes. So I think um, the, um, for, for me, the message in, in the documentary is just basically that it's 
it, it, it's not about, you know, going all in, you know, uh, vegan or non-vegan or anything, but, mm. but uh, it, it is rather, um, in, in most cases, every step, like being vegan or non-vegan, uh, you, you should probably see that as two points on a continuum. It's, okay. it's not, you know, it's not you're either the one or the other, but it's, you can move on that continuum from, from eating a lot of animal products more and more towards eating more plant-based. Um, and then, of course, there are people like me who go all the way and they're like, you know, 100% vegan, but you don't have to go all the way. So, so the benefits of, of, of a vegan diet and the benefits of a more plant-based diet, um, you're going to get a part of that with every step that you go towards. Like, for instance, you could have a vegan day in every week. And that's all already going to help you a lot because you're reducing all that stress on your system coming from all these animal products that we overconsume. And it's, you know, it's not um, a lot of people uh, think of it as, you know, you're, you're telling me uh, animal products are bad. That's not the point. The point is that we are overconsuming on these things. Right. So, so it's, you know, you, you can do a lot of things with your body because we, our body is a beautiful bio biological machine that is, made to survive in different circumstances so we can do a lot of terrible stuff with it and it's still going to adapt and try to survive so yeah you can eat the, those things but if you overeat them and that and do that for decades that's going to have a heavy toll on your body so you can reduce that with just going more towards towards a plant-based uh, lifestyle and then um, i think a lot of people once they see that it's you know it's actually helping them and it's great they're going to go a few more steps and then a lot of them might end up where I am now, but it's not about, you know, forcing anyone to, you know, to, to, you know, it's, it's not about forcing my belief system on anyone. It's just right. basically uh, saying, well, you have this option. It is great. You should maybe give it a try. Mm -hmm. So, so I think that's basically the message of the film and that's why it was so successful because, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's not trying to force a belief system on anyone. It's just, um, it, it, it's, it, it's more exposing how uh, media and how the industry and, and, and how culture is trying to impose the belief system of, you know, us being omnivores and, and being more carnivores uh, um, uh, biologically, how that works. And, and by that just basically liberates you from these small, uh, false misconceptions. Oh, great. I think I think we're supposed to be done uh, right now. Um, thank you, Patrick. I'd I honestly would just love to chat to you more about this because it's been such an interesting, uh, even for me, I you know, because I'm trying to be vegetarian and I'm, you know, going that way, but I've learned uh, a, a lot about uh, how, you know, to change. And I guess the message is it's not, you don't just go from zero to a hundred, just take it step by step and then we can yeah. find our way, right? Exactly. You, you don't have to. I mean, if you want, you can always do that. But, but I think it's really a process and, um, you know, you, everyone should do it in the way that, um, that fits their own, um, you know, personality and so on. Lovely. So as we close off, do you have any, just a last message for your audience or your followers or anyone that's watching about anything during this pandemic or anything you'd like to share? And then we'll, we'll sign off. Um, yeah, just, just, uh, I want just everyone to acknowledge the power of the individual and that, um, because I think one reason that a lot of people feel, um, you know, powerless in this, in this big world that we live in is that we think our own behavior doesn't really make a change because, you know, there are so many of us. And I think we have to acknowledge that every single one of us uh, has the power to, to change the whole world. So, so I want everyone to know that, um, and, um, I well, when I went vegan, a lot of people told me, "What do you think, as as one person, you, you, you you're going to change the world?" And and I always uh, one thing that I came up with was to, to say, "Well, every rainstorm starts with a single drop, so um, everyone can be that single first drop, and then um, you know, and water can be very powerful." <laughs> exactly, indeed. Well, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. And we wish you a great rest of the day and the conference too. Thank you, Patrick.